Good morning. It is 5 a.m. And welcome to a day in the life of an off-grid community of Hare Krishnas. Boot camp, day number three. <laughs> Hare Krishna, my name is Damodar Gopal Das, um, and I will explain a little bit about the, the Krishna consciousness philosophy. It's an ancient uh, tradition from India, and it got brought to the West by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shapopad, who translated um, many of the texts, especially Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, to English. And he did that by the order of his spiritual master. And he so nicely and expertly uh, explained Christian consciousness to us. I, I like to summarize the philosophy of Christian consciousness in this one sentence. So we're not these bodies. Hmm? I'm not my hand. I'm not my leg. I'm not my mind. But I'm also not the body. I'm the observer of my leg, my body, of my mind. So our, separate, our existence is separate from the body. We are the perceiver of the body. So therefore, we're conscious. Uh, we're conscious beings. And it's described in the Bhagavad Gita that this consciousness is eternal. We change bodies, just as from boyhood to youth to old age, one goes through these different body transformations. Uh, but we stay the same person, the same consciousness. Well, similarly, at the time of death, one moves on to another body. The consciousness of the living entity is eternal, but the body is temporary. And what is the eternal position of the spirit soul is to be a servant of Krishna. In its original state, in its pure state, the spirit soul is a servant of Krishna. The name Krishna addresses God as being all-attractive, the all-attractive one. And every spirit soul is the eternal servant of Krishna. And we have a relationship with Krishna uh, that just needs to be awakened. And that's a relationship of love. And our practice, the practice of bhakti yoga, of connecting true devotion to God is um, is what we do. And that's what the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and of Srimad Bhagavatam, those are the conclusion. It's to engage in the devotion of Krishna. And we do that by chanting His name, by worshipping His form, uh, by hearing His glories, by discussing the spiritual subject matters, understanding His instructions, understanding His examples, understanding the lives of the great saints and of the great examples of how they surrendered to Krishna, how they developed their love for Krishna. And by doing all these activities, we feel our love for Krishna being awakened. And this is something natural. We all have that love for Krishna. It just has to be awakened by the, pro by the proper process. Just like the propensity to walk is there in every child. And just by some practice, you will start walking. And it's natural. So similar, it's natural for everyone to love Krishna. It just has to be awakened in the right practice, in the right environment. And that's why we have a village to help us remind ourselves of Krishna, remind ourselves of the goal of life, to, to love Krishna. And we work together, trying to sustain our needs in a simple way and utilize our time for spiritual advancement, to engage in these activities that develop our love for Krishna. And that's the purpose of our village. The name of our village is Sharanagati, which means uh, to surrender to take the shelter of Krishna. So we try together as a community to take the shelter of Krishna.